Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin, Friday, February 23rd at around 9.30 a.m. walking around Madison Square Park and uh, I got into work at around 5.30 a.m. this morning. I had some work I really wanted to get done for a meeting that doesn't come until later today. So I figured after having actually gotten to the, you know, point of banking my success, I can afford to come out and try and reboot my video series again. Um, this is me just thinking out loud on YouTube. I don't consider myself a traditional YouTuber, although I have recently passed 8,000 subscribers, so I guess I'm doing something of interest. And, you know, I'm not one of these pigeonhole people. Uh, everything is really just the same, so uh, the way I'm using the social medias like YouTube here and increasingly now Twitter since it became 280 characters is as idea capture. Now honestly 140 characters was not enough to capture uh, even half a thought. <laughs> 280 is just barely enough. But it seems to be the right amount uh, for me to use it the same way as I would uh, jot off notes that you stand up and places such as Simple Note, uh, Apple Notes, and I had experimented for a while with uh, publishing as I go in all sorts of various ways. For those bite-sized chunks, I guess I was uh, sort of motivated or inspired by Seth Godin, the way he blogs. He does his books. He doesn't need to do long form on the web. And uh, excessively short, like tweeting, <laughs> sucks all the meaning out of it, unless you're one of these brilliant humorists. Uh, which I'm not. Um, <clears throat> so, I, uh, he, he does these small excerpts, which I, I don't even know what his platform was. Back in the day, it was probably WordPress or Skidoo, his platform before it got sold or whatever. But, um, I've tried Tumblr, I tried Medium, and I finally got around to the fact that, you know, uh, Twitter has just become it. It's, you know, a... Uh, public asset now the, with the president tweeting it on, on it all the time it, it's become you know one of these things that just has so much support and momentum behind it you know Arab Dawn the, you know the list goes on as to why Twitter is the social media that made it in that short form uh, format the short format and so I'm on it and I'm on it happily now and willingly and I'm just sort of vomiting out uh, a bunch of book contents that have been swarming around in my head for years, decades. Um, you know, the world is Alice in Wonderland. There's a reason that that story uh, is the main prototype story for all other stories like it. And there's just countless. I mean, Alice is one of those, you know, um, essential, what do you call it, uh, components. Uh, retold stories uh, you know if I had to throw out a few that have really charmed and delighted me of late it would be Gravity Falls um, and uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends those are the two that pop to mind uh, take some time sometimes to just watch the opening of Foster's jumping down the rabbit hole being joined by friend after friend which by the way casts it in the slightly newer, slightly more American version of Alice in Wonderland, which is, of course, The Wizard of Oz, which, just like Alice in Wonderland, is significantly different than what the pop culture image of it is, or I should say significantly more, because the Disney version of Alice is just as much Alice as is the Lewis Carroll. Okay, just as much? Well, it's greatly. And I go over these little facts with my daughter, uh, I think I was reading The Walrus and the Carpenter to her while she was uh, still in the womb. And even now today, uh, we'll go over things like when we see someone acting silly, we will categorize them as according to an Alice in Wonderland character, switching freely over to The Wizard of Oz. And this is exactly the type of thing I'm doing in my book because the giant takeaway and I talk about technology, I talk about, uh, you know, science, uh, programming, and philosophy. I guess I'm in that arena, too. Um, 
But the thing I, I really uh, keep coming back to is the storytelling, um, capability, uh, tweaking out uh, your capability, framing it in a story so that you can have a vision and work towards a vision. It's the artistic thing, you know? It's, you know, my main thing is, is art. And there's a reason for that. It covers all these things, art, music, poetry, dare I say mathematics, because mathematics is a lot more artistic than people give it credit for. It's all the same thing. It's all coming from that same place where there's more up in here than there is out here. There's a lot of ways to go about it, and many of the ways of explaining it come off as, as foo-foo mystical. But, you know, whatever labels you want to slap on it, what we know as the scientific method only brings us so far because the scientific method. I mean, it's a lot like the U.S. Constitution, uh, withholding final judgment because new things will come to light. The Constitution can be amended and has been many times, and science amend its, amends itself also, and the whole view of the world, oh, this is terrible background noise, uh, but the whole view of the world, you know, takes these lurching steps forward, first with the people with the uh, open enough mind to hear it, and then over the ages, uh, everyone else kind of catches up, and you know, the Earth being round, uh, the Earth not being at the center, revolving around the Sun, uh, atoms really, you know, comprising everything, and then atoms being made of much, much smaller stuff. Uh, and when you look real closely, it keeps getting away from it. Alice, the second book of Alice, one of the scenes that was cut from the movie, it's like, you don't know Alice unless you know why it was right in the quantum, you know, uh, mechanics discussion. I have to look at the date. I think it was like a hundred years before uh, Wizard of Oz, and Wizard of Oz was like 1930, so 18. So yeah, that puts it right into all that time when, you know, the Maxwells were figuring out light. Um, <clears throat> and the second book of Alice, when it's a chessboard uh, through the looking glass, uh, after she encounters the White Queen running after she's been through the flowers. Um, I think even after she's met Tweedledum and Tweedledee, she moves on, and the transition is through a gift shop or a, you know, a, a store that is run by a sheep knitting, a knitting sheep. It's kind of a famous image. If you saw it, you'd recognize it, even though it didn't make the Disney cut. And she sells things in the shop and. When Alice goes to look for things, each time she fixes her sights on a place on the shelf that caught her attention, the thing disappears and is in one spot adjacent. And every time she looks, uh, it moves. So there you have it. You know, you can pin down, you know, uh, two but not three attributes. When you try and pinpoint matter, it slips out on, from underneath of you because the truth is, things are immaterial. The world is made from energy and light and it just packs up real dense. E equals mc squared. Einstein taught us that. And, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's what everything's made of, and the world is actually a lot more different than we think. And why this does not fascinate and intrigue people, unlike, a, you know, why people aren't on the edge of their seats with what we discover next, uh, the way they are with, with the Olympics. But I guess they are. We're like, oh, around 8 billion people now. There's as many people who are fans of this stuff, mainstream fans of this stuff, as, as I am. I'm not alone. So uh, what I'm doing right now is really that, that silly dance. Uh, if you ever saw the internet video, you could probably find it, one of the original memes. You just Google up silly dance at some sort of fair or convention. And you know, you just keep on doing what you're doing. You be honest. You don't do it for the cameras. Uh, you don't do it knowing that it could become something big, but really in the back of your mind, you know it might. So you keep doing that, especially when you think you're onto something. People who are onto something are all, almost always ignored. 
Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. So, of course, you know, there's a lot more false starts in this world than there are people who get over that hump and see it through. Seth Godin, again, he wrote a book on it, The Dip. There's, you know, all these things are just reoccurring, reoccurring. So, I commented on it a lot. YouTube is, as my audience here knows, one of the places I do it. And I don't edit, you know? Life's too short for editing. I'm developing a whole sort of philosophy around it. And of course, there's always exceptions. I will edit every once in a while. And yeah, I actually aspire to get to the point where I can put real production value into this. At 8,000 subscribers with 2,000 more, I unlock that gamified next level here in New York City, which is YouTube Studios over at Chelsea Piers. And you know, if I'm making money off of my videos in any significant way, I could do it full time and uh, put some real production quality into it. But you know, why? I make good money with what I do professionally. I enjoy it. Um, the only thing that I'd probably like a little bit different is a better uh, work-life balance. So I could have some more time with my daughter. She's a homeschooled kid, and so I could very well be spending, you know, more than the two days a week uh, I do with her, you know, straight through. Figure out more activities I could do a heck of a lot more with three days than I than I could with two. So who knows? In my future, it might be Patreon or something. So. Anyway, I want to wrap up uh, here and, and get back to work. It's been a long while since I've done one of these, shooting little things of my lizard to just let you know I'm here. Oh, my new apartment, man. It's a studio, and boy, is it going to be a studio, let me tell you. I hope for these videos to switch from here, walking through the streets of New York, which I know are fun and interesting. People like that. But I'm going to do them more and more in my studio, focused on topics drilling down on those details of those things that I do that I talk about here in the abstract but are very, very concrete and precise in nature. I think I'll take up showing magic tricks here again because, you know, I was talking about art, science, and music, go to Lesher Bach, the eternal golden braid. It's funny, me considering myself a creative person, there's two things I don't like, music and math, right? I'm not a big music person. I don't actively dislike it. I appreciate the beauty in it when I hear it. And same with math. I appreciate the beauty on those rare times when I can get those glimpses of the pure symbolic thought that's behind it. But it's clearly, they both are clearly much better languages for free-flowing creativity of the sort that I enjoy. Uh, however, Python is absolutely the bridge into that math world. And I'm learning more and more, maybe even the art world and the storytelling world. Python brings an effect that I found in other of my favorite tools over the year, the Amiga being the one that was truest to my heart but died and went away. But other recent ones are the Vim text editor, um, the Git repo um, code control system, I guess you might have to call one of them. And there's this whole like vision of the world coming together from Linux, Python, Vim, and Git that uh, very much dovetails and meshes with all my other ideas in such a natural flowing way that I almost feel like I would be a, doing a disservice if I didn't do a little bit of you know, evangelizing um, on those topics with kind of an old school flavor with a keep it fresh and modern openness because hey everyone likes exciting stuff I like my toys and electronics and latest way of doing things as much as the next person but I also like my principles my underlying timeless technology tools that can allow for effortless mastery that's what I got to call it. There's a book by that name out there. Uh, a friend of mine had introduced it to me many years ago, and it's, you know, part of the, you know, array of uh, books that have become like little symbols of my mind of these different things. And what happens in Vim after you've been doing it for about five years and can almost start to telepathically control type with your mind is absolutely the same thing as with musical instruments, martial art, what arts weapons, it's muscle memory, it's fading into the background, it's, you know, spontaneous expertise and mastery. So um, I want to bring you there. That's going to be my thing. So that's 15 minutes, right? Good video to let you know I'm back. So thanks for joining me. Uh, it's a better time than ever to 
uh, subscribe, thumbs up if you like what I'm doing, and I'll see you real soon.